Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing Tanu Tuva. We're going to do the Siberian Tiger achievement. Now this is one that I did a long time ago now. Of course that particular strat is completely outdated. You can't really take all of Xinjiang anymore. Really, you can't take much of China at all, at least by yourself. The Soviets are much more greedy now than they used to be. So you may have run into this issue yourself where you tried the old strats and you got literally nothing from the peace deal and then you're like, well, where do I go from here? Well, that's what I'm going to be showing you today. We're going to be doing some, let's call it game features? not cheese not exploits no 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 it's it's all it's all it's all fair it's all actual game features that paradox completely intended to be used in this way yeah maybe not we're not gonna operate just as puny 80,000 man population tanu tuva we're gonna be operating with millions of manpower at our disposal so get ready for that it's gonna be fun and yeah i said it it's gonna be fun f-u-n if is for fire that burns down the whole town, use for uranium bombs, and is for no survivors when you like done. Those things aren't what fun is all about. Tanu Tuva can be fun. Let's go. There we go. That took forever. Okay, <laughs> let's do electronic engineering first, and we're gonna get a better gun. We start out with a really, really crap gun, so we do want to get a better one. We're also going to be doing political effort. Since we start communists, we're going to have to go down this tree, and we want to beeline all the way down to ideological fanaticism. All right, we got one unit. We'll just start training that unit right away, and let's build some infrastructure. Not much else we really need to do, so why not? All right, political effort is done. That means we can do some stuff with political power now. And because we are communist, as you can see, we can go ahead and justify against Iran. That's going to be our first justification. 2% world tension will be created from that. However, when we actually capitulate them, more tension than that will be created. And that's what we're aiming for. Next justification is going to be China. 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 Try to put on my best Trump impression there for you guys. I'm sure you all will enjoy that. China, 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 China. I have to have my China. China, China, because China. Uh, so we're going to do 365 day justification. 10% world tension will be created. And there we go. Collectivist ethos is going to be next. Like I said, we're going to go all the way down to ideological fanaticism. We're not going to do any other focuses before that. We do not do industrial effort. No, uh, well, we can't do naval effort anyways. We can't do any of these. None of that. No, 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 no. Just here. Focus your eyes here. Right here, right here. Collectivist ethos is done. We'll wait a couple days here. There we go. 150 PP. We're going to get our democratic reformer. We got our better gun now too. Let's go ahead and switch that out. We're not building much, but hey, let's get the better gun while we can. Research really it doesn't matter too much. I will say though, you don't start with support equipment research. You also don't start with artillery research. So I would highly recommend doing those. Of course, you don't have the truck as well. You also don't have trains. Those are gonna be important. You also start with no industry techs whatsoever. So try to improve those where you can, but I mean, Look how many research slots we have. It's not great. Not a great situation here in Tanutuva. But like I said, we're going to be improving that. We will make Tanutuva great again, I guess. Were they great once? No, I don't think that. Yeah, I think this is more LARPing than anything. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if they have any history. Maybe if they were part of Mongolia, they conquered the world at that point. <laughs> Who knows? So as you can see here, we're starting to gain some democratic support. We do need that because if you look at this focus down here, political commissars, once we get to this, this will actually increase the popularity of communism by 20%. So where can it take that from? Well, it's going to take that support from any democratic support that we have. So basically we need to build the democratic support as soon as possible, which is why we did that already. But we did want our justifications before that. That's why I did those first. Those are very, very important to this strategy. And you'll see what I'm doing with Iran and, and China soon enough. Okay, our justification is we're at like 180 days now. So let's promote some generals. 
We do need a general and we need a field marshal at the least. Oh, nice. I like that. Oh, and we got a little boost to our democracy support as well. Very nice. All right, let's promote this guy to field marshal. We can use that other general for the regular old guy. We will want the offensive doctrine as well. So let's do that. Decreases the amount of organization lost while moving. And that's going to be very important to capitulating Iran. So once we have a hundred political power here and we will in just a second, here we're gonna go ahead and grab our maneuver expert so here we go boop that will give our army division speed plus 10 percent, which is quite nice actually all right we gotta research some more stuff trains trains i like trains let's do that okay we have 100 pp we do need to grab our army maneuver expert that's gonna get us some xp as well as boost our division speed all right, and we have five XP now. We do need to make our little division template. We're just gonna do a two with cavalry and that will, will, will change our current division into that. We have it over here right now. We're getting ready with the invasion of Iran. We have about 70 days left on that. We're gonna start training another cavalry division with that excess manpower that we have. Put it over here. We'll, as soon as we hit 20% training on that, we'll send it over. I don't think in this region because there's too much desert and not enough cities over here. So we'll send that one over right here and try to quickly move in to these cities and Tehran there. And hopefully we can get more participation than the Soviets in this way. All right, we've got 20% on that division. Let's dump it out, add it to this grouping, and let's get a field marshal as well. Promote that guy right there. And we're gonna give him the offensive doctrine as well. That's gonna help us with our cavalry so they don't stop. That org loss when moving native 30% does help significantly with that. And like I said, we're just gonna railroad it all the way over here. And we still have a decent amount of time. We have about 50 days, so it should get there with enough time. All right, we just finished up political correctness. It's time for indoctrination, and we're gonna do the silent workhorse now. Okay, and once our justification on Iran finishes, we can declare war. Let's stop these training, and we're gonna move this cavalry right here. I did have it up here so that it wouldn't take a bunch of attrition. So there we go. Our justification is done. We can declare war. And we're gonna call in the Soviets and Mongolia. But we have another important step now and we really wanna make sure that we get this done right now. We wanna justify on the United States. It doesn't really matter where you choose, just choose one of these. That's gonna create 61% world tension, which is absolutely massive in 340 days. We're not actually gonna finish this war goal, but we do need to spike the tension up to 50%. So that's why we want to get this done as soon as we get our war goal on Iran. All right, so we called them in. Let's slow it down a little bit. There they go. We can now move in from the Soviet territory. So we're just going to snake all these territories all the way down to this city here, bandar e abbas And then here we're going to move, quickly move in and take uh, Ardabil, Karaj, and then Tehran. And then we'll move down and take some of these other cities. If we do run into resistance, we can just retreat. Yep, there it is. All right, so we're just going to retreat back. We'll let them move into that territory, and then we'll keep moving with this cavalry. So we'll move over to Tehran and then back to Karaj. We want the path of least resistance because our cavalry is a two-width. <laughs> you can't do that much with a two-width. Oh, okay. There's quite a few cities with a decent amount of victory points. And if they're defending stuff, I don't want to actually fight them. Soviets are actually going to free us up here by deorging this unit. Oh, and this unit made it all the way over here. Wow, even railroading is taking a while. <laughs> oh, we got the capitulation. Ah, oh, Soviets got more war score than us. Bummer. Oh, we got all of them. Nice. They are going to contest us now. We might be able to beat them. Oh, that is a big chunk of Iran right there. And the Soviets puppeted Kurdistan and a small bit of Iran. And then they took some chunks of land for themselves as well up here. All right, so now we can click this prepare for the civil war button. Before we could not have taken that because we didn't own more than one state. So as you can see, that is a prerequisite for this as well as the 10% support for democratic. And we do have more than 10% right now, but not that much more. And actually once we finish political commissars, this is gonna be our next focus. It will increase popularity of communism by 20%. And that is more than even what we have for democratic right now so we completely wipe out all of our support all right so next up we're going to be leaving the common turn but before we do that let's hit this improve relations and leave the faction 
And, oh, nice. Okay, good. We can actually click this right away. Sometimes it will factor in this faction trader, but in this case, it didn't for whatever reason. So I'll leave that improved relations just for a second. And we're going to ask for military access to the Mongolians as well. So we'll let it go. Accepted, accepted. Now we're going to stop the improved relations. We don't waste any PP boosting relations with the Soviets. We don't need them to like us anymore. So I'm fine with that. All right. And we're going to take these units all the way back to Tanituva now. And let's see. We have about 90 days left on our justification on China, and we just need to get up to 50% world tension. We still have that justification going on USA, and as you can see, the, the amount generated is quickly moving up. Oh, I forgot to actually click the prepare for the Civil War. It is very important to click that before political commissars finishes, because as I was saying, it's gonna wipe out our democratic support, which then we would not meet the prerequisites for this. So we need to click that now. As you can see though, the ignite the Civil War, that only has one prerequisite, which is less than 50% stability. So even if we're at 0% democratic support, we can still hit that Ignite the Civil War, which is kind of hilarious. But I'm glad that that is the case because we will be wiping out all of our democratic support. Oh, I forgot to do one other thing. So as you can see, all of our manpower is currently going to garrisons. That's not good. So let's switch this to no garrison default law. We'll make it the cavalry template too for later. And let's go ahead and delete these units too. We don't actually need them anymore. 2,000 manpower, 240 infantry equipment. You just want to make sure that says that when you are clicking the delete they are currently in the soviet lands but we can delete them and we'll still get everything back and there we go all of our manpower is now freed up we don't have to be actually garrisoning iran all right i'm gonna get towed into air next and then we're also gonna get armored train i love the armored trains all right so next up we just got political commissars and next up is going to be ideological fanaticism this is the one where it allows us to create factions it's very very important so the more world tension you create, the less likely the democratic nations are going to want to like join your faction. And yeah, we want to create more tension because that allows us to create factions sooner rather than later. But we also don't want too much tension personally created. Basically, you want less than 50% personally created so that you can still create factions with some democratic nations. All right, we're up to 50%, well, over 50%, now, 51%. And so I'm going to go ahead and do, do, there we go. We got that justification done. Now we can go ahead and cancel our justification on the United States. And we will have zero justifications going on right now. So that means we can do some new justifications. We can do one on nationalist Spain. I highly recommend this one. It's gonna create 7% world tension, 185 days. And then the second justification is gonna be on the Philippines. The reason for this is these justifications actually do not stop. It's kind of crazy. They, even though we'll civil war, so like we will have a civil war, we'll end up being here in Tanutuva as a democratic nation. Our enemy will be this Tanutuva that will be like half of Persia or half of Iran. <laughs> and so they're gonna own all of this. We're going to be at war with them and yeah, it, it creates a goofy situation. But anyways, the justifications that we do right now, they will actually continue when we're still a republic. And our enemy Tanutuva will not get those justifications, which is kind of strange considering our enemy will inherit any wars. So when we declare a war before doing our civil war on China, the enemy Tanutuva will be at war with China. We will have a mutual war with China, which makes China like us then. So if you can wrap your mind around this, it's very confusing, I know. But we, as the democratic Tanutuva, will be at war with enemy communist Tanutuva over here. China will also be at war with communist Tanutuva over here. And that makes China like us, so we can create a faction with them. So that's the whole idea behind doing rushing down to ideological fanaticism. We have to faction China before they create the Chinese United Front. Very, very important. So as soon as we get to like 69 days into ideological fanaticism, we're going to like slow the game down. And then once we finish the focus, we will pause as soon as we can and then create that or well, do everything that we need to do. So just make sure that you're watching this. Like, don't let it get too far in and get it done. If even a day passes, I think China will create the United Front. So you got to really be mindful of it. And as you can see, we have like super low democratic support. So it's going to be kind of a rough stability situation once we switch to the democratic, but it's okay. We'll be all right. All right, there we go. 69 days in. Let's slow it down just to make sure that we get this paused quickly once we're ready. 
There we go, pause it. We were three hours in, so that's that's good enough. We have our justifications going. We're good on that front. We deleted our units already. We got military access with both Mongolia and with the Soviets. Very important to get those done. We have our enemy Tuva here that will be spawning in just a second. So I think all of our, everything is done and ready to go. Let's go ahead and declare war on China. And you do see they are guaranteed independence by the United Kingdom. That's perfectly fine though. And actually the British have also now guaranteed the Philippines, which is also great for us. We wanted that to happen. All right, declare war now. So we're at war with China. We will be at war with the allies, but we can weasel our way out of this. So now we're gonna hit ignite the civil war right here. So yeah, that took our stability down significantly. War support also affects stability, so that decreased it even further. Ignite the Civil War. And when we look at China now, look at this option that's available to us. Create a faction. And you can see like we are in the same side in a war. Chinese opinion of us is negative. It doesn't matter though. They are not aligned. It's not enough to overcome that plus 100, which is fantastic. So let's create a faction with them. Oh, I was going to name it the Chinese United Front, but I'm so used to just clicking. <laughs> so I retained some of the land. Okay, so we have our faction. And now we just need to wait for... Japan is going to get war goals on China and Shanxi. And if we improve relations with Shanxi, we will be able to get them into our faction right away. So let's do that now. Tanutuva is also at war with the allies now. Hopefully they'll create a... Not a puppet, but like they'll liberate this territory. That would be really nice if they do that. I'm just interested to see the peace deal of what the, the British do. Do they have to take every single territory? Ah, there it is. All right, so yeah, we have zero points for this. British Raj has like all the points. So let's see what happens. Tanituva was annexed, equipment was seized, and we just got it all back, <laughs> which is kind of funny. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get relief of command now. Since we're in democracy now, we can do that. Oh, another good idea to do, you do wanna get improved worker conditions done and anti-communist rates. That's gonna be really important for actually boosting our democracy support then. But yeah, as you can see, it's 0.15 per day then. Oh, and we have a new civil war. <laughs> if we click the first one, the communist supporters start a civil war. Democratic becomes the ruling party. We're already democratic. If we click the second one, the democratic supporters start a civil war and CPSU becomes the ruling party. So we don't want to click the second one because we don't want to go back to communist. We just have another civil war now. It's fine though. It doesn't matter. Oh, China has just been declared war on by Japan. All right, oh, I forgot to do something. We needed to train a cavalry. Just a singular cavalry division is all we need. I should have had that ready already, but it's okay. They should have the war goal on Shanxi. Yes, they do. And we, once they declare war on them, I think we should be able to get them into the faction fairly quickly. Man, Kyukyu joining Japan as an enemy is what caused them to then want to <laughs> join our faction. So we're gonna accept them in now. So now we just need to wait until this unit gets to 20%. We'll have Shanxi into the faction. And look at that, that's beautiful. Okay, there we go, 20%. Dump the unit out. This is what will allow us to do something special here. We're just gonna create a garrison order up here. And then we're going to do request expeditionaries. So China will usually give about 24, 25, something like that. There we go, and Shanxi usually gives three. But you always wanna check and just make sure if they, if they are willing to give more, take more from them. And we're gonna do our order 99 special right now. So Pigeon <laughs> coined this one. In one of my streams, actually, the, the guys were saying, well, it's like a reverse order 66 because we're actually wanting our ally to capitulate and causing them to capitulate. So yeah, it became coined the Order 99. The idea is just to get troops off of the front, but in this case, we're actually able to get them up into our territory. And then if they request the return of the expeditionaries, they can actually never get back home. China will not get military access with Mongolia or Soviets, and we're completely surrounded by the Comintern. And as long as China and Shanxi do not get military access with either one of them, they can't get the troops back into their own territory. <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay, our justification on the Belly Aris against Nationalist Spain just finished. I should have been improving relations with these guys here to make sure that we can get them into the faction, but it's okay. We'll do that right now. 
and let's declare war and then we should be able to get these guys into our faction fairly soon yeah we're at 125 of 128 needed well we, we would need 129 but we'll get military access and we should be able to get a non-aggression pact then and they are going to like us significantly more oh invite to the faction it just became available let's do non-aggression pact first just to make them like us even more and then invite to the faction so and we can do the same thing against spain that we just did with china so request expeditionary they will give us nine troops not not bad at all really all right so i'm gonna actually grab all of these troops all right so now we're gonna halt all of these guys we want to push somewhere dangerous with them where they may end up getting surrounded call to arms from spain they just want us to join against think probably these guys here the regional defense council we'll accept that that's fine so we just want to get all the troops that we can into this pocket here so we'll move even more troops up here hopefully if we put them all on this one tile more than likely they're gonna invade here or here and just just get us surrounded and hopefully we can get this done before the expeditionaries are all called back right now they are called back there we go now we have the double attack going so that that will increase the damage that we're taking even more so we just want to we, we want to get them destroyed as much as possible come on move 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 in there do it do it so we'll continue doing those last stands and force attacks Oh, Yellow River has been blown. So I think that's rather early, but we did take a significant amount of troops from them on the border here. And as you can see, they're starting to get beat up a little bit. We can also kick these guys from the faction on October 30th and China can be kicked already. Although we would need to be able to kick Spain if we do want to create a new faction with someone as well. And yeah, we can't actually kick them until December 16th. Or they could capitulate. That's the other option. But it's very difficult for them to actually capitulate while they have this unplanned offensive. Because that's actually kind of a bonus for their defense. But I think the first people we will create a faction with, it's probably going to be Liberia. Because we don't actually need any extra factories. We can already guarantee their independence. Yeah, so right now they would need 80% world tension. And right now we have 73%. Now that will be going up when Germany does Anschluss. And that will, that will boost the overall world tension oh we can do total mobilization now and women in the workforce let's go ahead and just do that just to have it done oh no <laughs> chinese troops made it all the way <laughs> into nationalists or into spain <laughs> <laughs> it's not good well it's, it's kind of good because they're wasting troops in doing that but uh all right we got the communism on the rise event we're just going to say this will blow over because the other one would cause a referendum we definitely don't want that and this is saying we'll have a full-blown civil war that literally doesn't matter we're already in a civil war so who cares and we're actually trying to get these other places to revolt that's our new goal we want another war with the Tuvan Independent Republic or external Iranian territories there. Oh, there goes Regional Defense Council. And it did a traditional peace deal rather than just being capped because I think we've created factions and now there's some funny business here. But we have zero points, so we're just going to confirm an exit. They get annexed, and hopefully Spain will continue to cap now. Oh, there goes Shanxi. Nice. And I believe their units should still be up here. Yep. <laughs> All three other units are still up there. Let's get some more guns. We are going to need a lot of guns. And we can start importing a little bit as well. Let's get some from Sweden. They're a nice neutral nation that we can import from. China's still not looking great. Now that Shanxi has fallen, there's a lot of troops trapped up here. Let's see. Okay, we're at plus nine now. Let's keep going with that. Improve relations. Okay, our justification on Luzon is finished in the Philippines. And we've now created 47.9% tension. So let's declare war on the Philippines. And that will bring the United Kingdom against us and the rest of the allies as well. Declare war. We're going to call everyone in. And wow, they're taking some massive hits here now. United States joining the United Kingdom. That's good. That's what we wanted to happen. Tenutuva joined the allies. All right. <laughs> now they're in the allies. Communist Tenutuva. There it is. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to kick everyone from the faction. We can't dismantle it just yet, but we can kick all of them. So kick, China, kick, and Shanxi is capitulated, so they don't matter as far as dismantling the faction. So we can actually dismantle it right now. All right, and now we can, we should be able to create a faction with Liberia. Yes, beautiful. Create the faction, and then we can just invite some people back to the faction. Shanxi in Spain, China doesn't want to join. China, what's your problem? I think we're going to have to improve relations with them. Yep. Improve relations, military access, non-aggression pact. We'll have to do all that. Oh, wow. 
almost all those units just deorged and got destroyed. All right, we got one division from Shanxi now, and we have an exiled government and exiled legitimacy is 39 at the moment. We're getting 28 daily exiled veteran manpower from them right now. So we can do these parliamentary speeches and public recognition. There's going to be a good idea to do. You want at least 50 legitimacy, and then you can start pulling some extra factories from them as well. And I'll show that later. There it is. Invite to faction. And we can do the same thing with China once again. All right, let's call Liberia into the war. Okay, they're willing to join the war on Ethiopia for whatever reason, but not the other war. But after they get called into that one, they'll join the other one anyways. Yeah, now they're at war with the allies, so we're good. They're going to be moving in and attacking, but they're going to get capped really fast. We really just need Spain to get capped now, but it's like, it's a difficult thing because they still have this unplanned offensive. So it just takes an absolute age for them to actually get capped. Well, there goes Liberia. Good. We have a while until we can actually kick these guys from the faction now though, since we just created a faction. I'm going to keep doing those anti-communist raids because we do need to keep boosting our democratic support. Ah, yes, finally. No more unplanned offensive in Madrid. That unit's going to get absolutely wiped. More naval invasions going on in China. We got the French coming this time. Fall of Nanjing. This is the only time you actively root for your allies to be destroyed. <laughs> and there goes Spain. Nice. All right. So that gave us... Oh, we're up to 19 factories now. That is beautiful. But we're actually going to be doing an attack with the Germans and the, the rest of the Axis. We may... If we can, we'll actually join the Axis later too. So we'll see if that will actually work. Yeah. Cross your fingers for that. Oh, interesting. Nation Francais declared war on France. I like it. I, so I've seen this now in two different of my tests. I don't know if this is like RNG or if I've just been doing something differently now and that for whatever reason causes this civil war to happen. So I have no idea, but I like it because I think we'll be able to create a faction with them and actually get them to collapse then. Oh wow, the Chinese actually wiped out the French forces or, oh, I think they all got called back or something. All right, it's June 30th. Let's go ahead and kick China from our faction. Wait a little bit more. Wait a little bit more. There we go. Okay, kick from faction. Faction. Dismantle the faction and cross your fingers. Ah, oh, no, we're so close. We could send the attache. I don't know if that would actually help or not. That'll take a hundred PP. Well, let's just do it. If it helps, it helps. Not that much. It, it did improve their relations with us, but it, it didn't actually help that much for, for anything else. But let's guarantee Ireland now and then create the faction. Invite everyone back in as well. And we'll just keep doing no focus for a while because we need the PP. Whoa, Ireland is actually kind of dominating here, at least until Britain or someone does naval invasions on them. China is at 70%. Not too shabby. And man, nation friends. <laughs> I really, really just want to get them into a faction. It would be hilarious. But we will prepare another nation for an invasion. We could do someone like Panama because the United States borders them. They have 18 to 21 factories, so pretty darn good. It's a good place to start because, like I said, the United States will have some troops here. So let's improve relations with them. We'll, we'll get them prepared for creating a faction. All right, we got our first agent. I guess we can try to do diplomatic pressure. And let's get the other bonus for doing so. So we'll get this one, diplomatic training. Ireland is not going to survive long. Oh, so many junk divisions. <laughs> All right, Ireland is now one of our exiled governments. We have Panama now prepared to create a faction with. So we're all set on that. Let's give China a little bit of time here, or Japan, to see if they can actually get these guys. All right, they're not going to get it. So let's go ahead and just kick them. And then we'll dismantle the faction. And let's check France first. <gasps> oh, it's going to work. Yes. Okay, so diplomatic pressure actually does apply to create a faction. Oh, that's amazing. All right, we're creating that faction. And now we're going to invite everyone back in. Oh, I love it. <laughs> now that we have them in our faction, we can do this. So they will give us 12 troops. Oh, yikes. Wow, they lost a ton of troops there. Or they're getting them out of Dunkirk, possibly. Yeah. National Spain joined the Allies. Oh, look at that. Nice. Yes. All right, so now you're going to see the absolute insanity that is Chinese manpower. Let it go a second. Can we get their fleet? Nope, they have too much. Too much legitimacy. They need less than 80. So it's fine. We'll just we'll do the parliamentary speeches and all that good stuff. And let's see what we're getting. 89 legitimacy. We get 1.59k per day manpower. Exiled veteran manpower. And with the extraction campaign, let's check that. Where is it? 
There it is, Chinese extraction command. All right, we'll click that, let it go. Now we're getting 2.38K per day with 89 legitimacy, which is beautiful. One thing I forgot about, we're gonna need some armored trains too. Very, very important. We need to, the sooner we can get those, the better because we're gonna need a lot of them. All right, we can kick these guys from the faction. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're just gonna recreate this faction with them. And then hopefully we can get some troops from them again. No, they're not willing to. Ah, bummer. Okay, well, we still gotta invite everyone else back in, but we can't actually do that with France. So that's an important note, but it's okay. It's just a matter of time before they're they're destroyed. So the, the United States is coming. The cavalry has arrived. It's happening. Fate of Czechoslovakia just happened. And Nation France has been exiled. Beautiful. So that boosted our factories even more. Let's go ahead and do Panama now. We can dismantle the faction. Actually, I should have waited like a day. I hope that doesn't mess it up. But we can create the faction with Panama. Invite people back in. Let's see if they'll give us their navy. <gasps> they accepted. Panama next. Call to arms. Italian war on Ethiopia. So look at that disgusting France. <laughs> <laughs> with part of it owned by nationalist spain their country is an absolute wreck i'm kind of wondering whether we couldn't get a faction done with italy as well if we improved relations and did all that stuff with them diplomatic pressure maybe it's possible so we'll do diplomatic pressure on italy now we could probably keep doing some of these things too it's definitely a good idea this is a good one right here the cryptology stuff would be good against the soviets so that we can get some boosts later wow that was fast panama is gone already i should have prepared on colombia now i should have done that already but it is what it is so guarantee independence improve relations there we go oh and we have 48 factories right now we can go ahead and do before this goes away as an option to us we can do reorganize the railway system that that gives plus 300 percent construction to supply hubs all right and with 100 percent world tension i think that might be enough to be able to create a faction with colombia if we dismantle the faction so let's see yep that's enough create the faction invite everyone back in everyone rejoin join up and we're gonna call them to war right away as well and let's do ecuador next guarantee independence all that good stuff oh i should have checked if we could actually faction italy oh <laughs> nation france was annexed oh that sucks we lost a lot of factories from that yay colombia's gone well first we'll do ecuador so dismantle the faction great faction invite everyone back as usual and i think we'll do belgium next all right germany's going to war with the allies which means we're gonna need to join the axis somewhat soon here oh wow. france is getting absolutely pounded already well there's the fall of paris once again, France capitulates yet again, and now we have a new fascist France, the second fascist France. And what is this line? Holy cow, they must have dropped a ton of troops in there. The allies, please just finish them off. Finally, okay, Let me get us some more factories, all that good stuff. We probably need to keep doing these public recognitions and we wanna be able to get expatriate factories from all of these people. So like Ireland would need to get to 60, Panama, Colombia, Ecuador, all of them would need to get up to 60. We do have to be mindful of course of the political power that we're spending and that we have, but we can afford a little bit of that right now. All right, well, before we join the Axis, let's go ahead and let's do Chile right now. All right, Germany's doing the Benelux attack now, and Poland did get finished off. Uh, Netherlands is being attacked as well. We're running out of PP. I did too many of these things here. Guarantee independence, and let's dismantle, create new faction with Chile. Actually, let me, and we're trying to get Chile to collapse, but it's, there's not too much we can do. I mean, we can try to grab a few units or maybe one. Yeah, we can get one. That's something, I guess. Oh, it's the border troop though. Oh, nice, okay. Let's get out of there. We need to start training some Chinese units. We're just gonna add maintenance company into this. China spam. All right, so 18 width, 106 soft attack right now. We could probably improve that later as we get more factories and such, but for now, this will be fine. We can train a whole bunch of these. Oh, there we go. Okay, 61 divisions. Uh, we need to be doing some of these expatriate donations as well as we can. When can we kick these guys? February 21st, okay. So yeah, let, let's uh, try to get Costa Rica, guarantee independence, prove relations, there we go. All right, we can kick Chile from the faction now. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I wanna create a new faction. Kick from the faction and we'll invite them right back in, but yeah, dismantle Costa Rica, create faction. 
And there we go. Everyone's joining the Greater East Asian Coil Prosperity Sphere now. El Salvador just did. So we can still do Honduras. They're next to El Salvador. And we just got Costa Rica in. Mexico. Oh, Mexico is a really good one if we can do them. 24 to 30 factories. Oh no, I was too late. United Mexican States joined the Allies. Oh, I was just going to get them too. <laughs> That's so sad. Oh well, we'll get someone else. I guess Honduras next. Finally destroying them. Nice. We're going to send these into the German territory. All right, so next up, dismantle the faction. And who did we even improve with? I forget now. Was it Honduras? Yeah, it was. All right, create faction. Invite back. We're ready to go against the Soviets. So we do have military access with Romania now as well. And I think we'll be in decent shape. As long as we can get supplies. That's the biggest thing. Oh... Some people from my faction actually, like, I left a, a little blip of time and they joined the common turn. And so now the common turn is at war with the Japanese, which is kind of crazy. So the, about the whole world is at war with each other now. We do need to build up a bit of a buffer of our infantry equipment because we're not going to be able to produce when, once we get surrounded. We'll just be entirely surrounded and can't really do anything at that point. Yay, Cuba finally exiled. It's kind of late though, like it doesn't really matter at this point. We're probably going to just dismantle the faction soon and then declare war on the Soviets. So we need a war goal against them. That would take 30 days. If we can get enough troops in here itself, we could recruit some more uh, Chinese divisions in there. That's going to create another deficit. I don't like that. We're needing more expatriate donations. <laughs> more political power, as always. I am doing diplomatic pressure on this on the Germans. So they're actually bringing troops around us now. And we do have the available war goal. Oh, there's Barbarossa. Oh, snap. Okay. All right, well, we're doing this. We've got all of our troops here. Oh, I should have been building the planning bonus. But maybe we're not going to be able to join the Axis, is what it's looking like. No, they do not like us. <laughs> I don't care, though, as long as, as, long as we're, we're good to go with, with defeating the Soviets. And as long as we have supplies, that was the biggest thing. I was hoping they would send us an invite, but maybe not. The Soviets aren't even attacking us in our own territory. We just have too many troops there, I think. But eventually, we will want to push out from here and take some of these territories. And we're doing quite well so far, so I'm happy with how this is going. Uh-oh. Oh, I just gave some really bad orders. Okay, we'll just halt that. <laughs> But I do want to keep pushing where we can. We want to get the war score. It's very important that we get the war score. Or as much as we can. We want to be the ones to push, not Germany. Really not too much resistance here in the in the West. Alright, I'm going to kind of cautiously try to advance out of here. Uh, we need to delete this order first. But let's create a new front line. And then we'll just uh, set a attack order up here somewhere. Alright, we're walking into Leningrad. It's going to take forever but hopefully we can make it and most of the victory points are going to be down in these regions and if we can just push from there that's going to be a better deal for us we're almost to moscow let's push i'd like to be the one that's that gets in there but they have a tank trying to get in as well so i think that will probably be the the one that does the trick yeah unfortunately germany got it but it is what it is japan biting off more than they can chew attacking the philippines they're going to be at war with the allies now and that is going to absolutely ruin them wow they have nothing down here all right, we'll try to be the first ones to Stalingrad now, too. Get our troops heading over there. Stalingrad's another really nice prize if you can get it. We're about to walk into Stalingrad. They're trying to prevent us. Supply situation is getting kind of bad in a lot of areas, it looks like. Oh, we got Stalingrad. Nice. All right, let's check how close they are. 74%. Not too bad. And they're actually attacking us now, doing a counterattack. Oh! Invite to the faction. <laughs> Germany's willing to do it now. Is that a good idea? I think it is. We don't need to fight the Germans later, I don't think. Although, there is one issue that could happen. If they end up taking some territory, like rather than Japan taking it, if we're not able to go to war with them, it's actually kind of an issue. Let's just do it. We'll see how this works. So I think we should be getting good supplies now. That's the thing. Like, if we can get good supplies, we can push a lot better, which is really helpful. All right, let's see, we're at 94% on the Soviets now. We just gotta keep pushing in, taking more stuff. And before we know it, they'll be gone. We are struggling massively on guns now and even support equipment a little bit. Keep pushing regardless of any supply issues. <laughs> let's see how many Chinese we have now. Almost a million. And I haven't even been clicking the extraction campaign for quite a while now. All right, we got, we got Iran capitulated. I think it's happening. 
Yes. Okay. So we have 628 points. Germany has 1,044. Oof. Japan has 484. The thing is, we don't need to worry about this stuff over here if Japan takes this, because we can actually push back and take it back from them. But we do need to get the stuff that we want to get. Like, Xinjiang's gonna be really good, and we need to take a whole bunch of stuff kind of around these areas. That's unfortunate. All right, I'm going to take a look at the list of what is needed. Okay, so this is what we're looking at of what we need. We absolutely need these territories specifically. So to actually create Siberia, then the, anything else is just going to be icing on the cake. Okay, so that's going to be all that we can choose for this time. Hopefully Germany doesn't get too far into the east. Oh, Romania is actually contesting us and the Japanese are contesting us a little bit as well. Interesting. So far we're looking pretty good. Okay, this is pretty close to what we want, though. Um, and we do need to win these contests if we can. I think that's okay. We'll be able to just march in and take it from them. Okay, just fire Wargle. <laughs> Germany actually got this. Oh, no. Germany. Why? But Germany has control of it. So I should be able to ask them for that, then. Okay, they'll give us one of those states. That's not good enough. <laughs> Let's go ahead and click our decision here. We should have that available to us now. Unite the Turks. Very nice. Wait, which do we want to be? Do we want to be Siberia or Turkestan? I think we want to be we want to be Siberia. So let's do this one first. Then we'll do form a Siberian state. So at this point, we would have the achievement for Siberian Tiger. Man, my brain's a little bit fried. Although this was fun. <laughs> Just got a little crazy. All right, so yeah, 114 factories. We have 35.11 million core population, and we can continue to increase that as well if we can do these other decisions. So kind of insane. This is definitely a, a much better way to do this. It allows you to actually have some agency <laughs> rather than just trying to fight it in this horrible, horrible land here in the east. If you can just push in with the Germans and still have supplies there, that is 100% the way to go. So we got this by 1941 and we would have the achievement as well. So if you would want to continue after this, you can still be pretty powerful because of all those factories that we picked up, we're certainly not going to be weak. We're still pulling a lot of factories from a lot of these nations, so it's pretty epic. So uh, thanks for watching everyone, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This one took a lot of time to do. I Man, I really, really struggled with figuring out all the little details with this because there are a lot of little tiny things that, that can kind of change it. it if you're not careful and if you're not precise with what you're doing. So yeah, this one was really, really complicated, but uh, hopefully it's in a state that, that is not so complicated for you guys watching <laughs> and you'll be able to follow along with this, end up getting the achievement in a very, very nice amount of time. 1941 and democracy prevails. The democracy is very powerful. I think we've all thought it was weak, but definitely not. <laughs> so yeah, thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't yet and hopefully we can get some more of these crazy ideas out and into the world where you guys can all see them so yep see you all later bye bye